glad you're with us today. If you have yet to subscribe to our YouTube channel, then you can do so by clicking subscribe below and clicking on the notification bell so that you're notified whenever we upload new content. And if you have yet to subscribe to our newsletter, you can do so by clicking the link below in the description box. That way you know of everything that's happening from week to week here at Trinity. If you need some prayer or support, then why don't you text us at 438-600-6128. Now for offering, you can give by using our app, our website, dropping it off at the church building or by mail. Now for worship with Nat and the worship team. Good morning, everybody. It's it's so good to be with you again on this day, the, the Lord's Day. Um, just before we enter into worship, I wanted to read a couple portions um, of uh, Psalm 65. Um, pray that it encourages you and blesses you this morning. Um, I know it definitely did for me. So starting at verse 3, says this. Though we are overwhelmed by our sins, you forgive them all. What joy for those you choose to bring near. You faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds, O oh God, our Savior. You are the hope of everyone on earth. What a line for the world today. Um, he is the hope of everyone on earth. From where the sun rises to where it sets, you inspire shouts of joy and that's our prayer for you uh this morning that he would inspire you um through uh wonder and and, and awe this morning uh, that you would be inspired to shouts of joy that you would be inspired to sing a song a new song from the depths of your heart and soul to him because he is so good he faithfully answers our prayers he he provides our every need he listens to uh to our cries and our pleas um, he is so good. He is so good. And he is deserving of everything that we have to give him this morning. So let's do that together in worship.
promises that still stand. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me For change to come, knowing the battles won. For you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet.
Well, good morning. Have you ever felt that God isn't answering your cry for help? Well, of course you have. I don't even need to give you my own illustrations. We have all been through our own difficult moments where we say, God, where are you in this situation? Why don't you answer me? It's natural that these kinds of reactions and disappoint disappointments lead to other questions, such as, God, do you really exist? Uh, do, you, do you care? Are you even able to do anything in my situation? This morning, in this last installment of our series about doubt, I would like to attempt an answer to what we're supposed to do when God is silent. I remember many years ago when I had just gotten my driver's license. You know, in those days, uh, it didn't take a whole year, right? Uh, you passed the test, uh, you got a, a permit to practice, and a month later, you passed the driver's test, and presto, you had a license. And actually, to be honest, I had to write the test, the, or do the driver's test twice, because I remember coming out of the parking lot, I almost ran over this uh, this woman who was crossing the street. Anyways. I, I had to do it twice, but it was around that time that for the first time in his life, my dad decided to buy a brand new car right from the, Toy the Toyota dealer. And guess what? I had my license, you know, it was like perfect. Well, the first time my dad let me drive uh, the new car, he told me, uh, you got to take it straight home from the church. And that's where it all happened. My brother, you know, he was sitting right next to me as I was driving, but we were kind of both looking at the buttons on the dash, you know, and, 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 and saying, oh, look, look, at what, what is this button doing? Bang, you know, and we hit the curb with such force that I thought for sure I had I'd blown the, the front tire. So after looking at it, there was a, a big, dent in, in the wheel and uh, so when we got home I uh, kind of had to break the news to my dad and I'll always remember his response and obviously I'm 49 years old now and I still remember it he his response was nothing silence <laughs> and of course the issue came up later but uh, for the, the first little while this the silence was extremely loud and so I'm sure you can understand where I'm going with this. Loud and quick verbal answers are not always the most powerful. As parents learn, there are many ways to answer. Remember that God is no less a person than we are. I mean, of course, he's so much more. He is not a God of our own making, but rather he is God who made us. You remember the story of Daniel in the Bible? What a beautiful example of a young man who made a decision in his heart to be obedient to God first. Above position, above profit, above even government. And many times at his own personal risk, he lived his life believing that godly principle would always win out in the end. And his stories are almost unbelievable with risking his life for a scripturally based diet or, or being thrown to the lions for praying. Inspiring stories of how even young people can live according to godly principle. But even Daniel had to face moments when God was silent. He lived at a time of great military and, and political upheaval. And, and since his position required him to have political wisdom and discernment, the Bible tells us that he regularly asked God to give him what no human could. During one of these moments, he seemed to hit a wall, you know, and, and no answer would come. And it went on for days and days until finally there was a break from the silence and an angel actually comes to him with a message. Let's read what the angel says 
Daniel chapter 10. Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince uh, of the Persian kingdom, here the prince is like a spiritual being or a demon, the, the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, now this is another spiritual being, uh, this time an angel. So Michael came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. <laughs> what a passage. I mean, what an unusual glimpse into the spiritual world. From Daniel's experience with God, we learn that sometimes God is silent because of spiritual oppression. God's power, his concern, his ability to hear us are unchanged. But don't be deceived into thinking that there isn't organized and powerful evil forces at work in the world and that those powers and influences, they have an influence on us as well. The battle is mine, says the Lord, and in the name of Jesus we must have victory. But sometimes we need to be persistent in prayer. Of course, Daniel didn't know the name of Jesus, and, and so he had to be even more persistent than we are today. But speaking of Jesus, do you remember uh, when Jesus was asleep in the boat? It's another great uh, story. Um, my boys, you know, lately, uh, my boys want me to buy a boat, right? So uh, we can take the boat and go out together on the water, and, and so I've been thinking uh, about boats lately, uh, although I don't know anything about them. But at any rate, the <clears throat> uh, boats were part of uh, uh, some of the, a few of the disciples anyways. It was part of their lives, right? It was their livelihood. Well, a storm hit them out of nowhere while they were in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. By the way, the Sea of Galilee is only 21 kilometers uh, across. Uh, just to compare, Lac Saint-Jean here in Quebec is 43 kilometers, uh, so twice as big. So it's really small, and yet uh, this storm just uh, took them by surprise, and it, it was night, and the wind was blowing like a hurricane. Uh, the boat was taking on water faster than they could scoop it out, and, and these tough Men who, I mean, boats were part of their lives, started losing their cool. And the whole time, Jesus is asleep in the back of the boat, silent. Here's what they do, and I'm reading from Matthew chapter 8. The disciples went and, and woke him, saying, Lord, save us! We're going to drown! And Jesus replied, you of little faith... Why are you so afraid? Then he got up and, and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed, and they asked, What kind of a man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. <laughs> this story always makes me wonder if the disciples thought that Jesus, who, you know, by the way, um, was God himself in the flesh. And I think that the disciples understood that, that he was God himself in the flesh. Uh, I, I wonder if the disciples thought that Jesus would actually drown in the boat with them. Think of the headline. Creator of the universe drowns in an unfortunate accident in the Sea of Galilee last night. Rescue teams are working around the clock to drag the bottom of the lake for any remains of the Son of God. They are treating his mother Mary for shock. I mean, it's a little funny, right? Maybe in your situation today, you're trying to wake Jesus. Lord, wake up! Save us! We're going to drown! And Jesus kind of looks up at you and, and says, Did you notice? 
that I was in the boat with you? Sometimes God is silent because we need to grow in our faith in who He is. At the right time, He will rebuke the storm. But have we come to the point in our lives where we can worship Him rather than being afraid of our circumstances? What kind of a man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey Him. The last story I have for you this morning is, also involves uh, Jesus. Um, Jesus and uh, his good friends, uh, good friends of his, Lazarus, uh, Mary Magdalene, Martha. I mean, he would often end up with them in, in a place called Bethany. Uh, he would have a good barbecue after a long week of ministry going from city to city. And so Jesus was um, with them uh, because he enjoyed their company. Uh, not just to proclaim the kingdom of God. Do you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? It wasn't just business. Uh, it was friendship. And it's important that we understand this because the rest of the story is so difficult for us to accept. Some people went to find Jesus um, and his ministry team, and they passed on an important message that, that Lazarus was very sick and could die. Of course, the family and friends of Lazarus were thinking, um, like we often think when we're in a rough spot, hey, I know someone who can help. I know, I know someone in high places. Well, of course, Jesus, he's a healer. Surely he's going to answer. Surely he's going to break into my situation. Surely Jesus will see the importance of coming right away. And yet, Jesus doesn't come. He was in other places, you know, healing other people, speaking words of hope and changing people's lives in, in other places. And yet, for the one he loved, his close friend, he says nothing. He waits. And Lazarus dies. Jesus finally comes four days too late. And it's not only that Lazarus was dead, but there were things dying inside the hearts of Mary and Martha. Let me read to you one of the most emotional passages of the New Testament. John chapter 11. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was, was and saw him she fell at his feet and said lord if you had been here my brother would not have died when jesus saw her weeping and the jews who had come along with her also weeping he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled where have you laid him he asked come and see lord they replied and jesus wept when Jesus finally breaks the silence, you know what he says? You know what he says to her? He says, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Well, well, wait a minute. That's not the right thing, right? I mean, he's supposed to say something like, if you believe, your brother will be healed. If you believe, your, your prayer will be answered. If you believe... This mountain will be moved, right? No, he says, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Now, I told you there would be a part of this story that would be difficult to accept. God is silent sometimes for his own reasons that are beyond us. It's his glory, not ours. It's his answer not ours. It's his power and not ours. We don't own God. He owns us. But I'll tell you what, God doesn't destroy what he owns. He doesn't squash what he has created. You know the, the passage in Matthew chapter 7, if you then, though you are evil, 
know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? For those, uh, for those who are not familiar with the story of Lazarus, by the way, Jesus raises him from the dead. But here's the center of the issue. When God gives the gift, when God gives the answer, when God gives the healing or directs or, or delivers you, will you be able to see beyond that gift to the one who was present in your life from before you were born? Because it's not the answer he wants you to hear, but himself. Lord, I want to know you more. Not just your provision, not just the deliverance, not just the healing, but Lord, I want to know you more. Martin Luther's wife, Catherine von Bora, once noticed that her husband had become discouraged and unresponsive and for weeks on end. One day she decided that uh, she would dress in black morning clothes. And as she passed by him, she announced to Luther, someone has died. So he kind of jumps around and says, who? Luther asks, it seems that God must have died, she says. I think Luther got the point. If God is not dead, why in our doubt do we continue to act as though he were? Here's a really interesting verse, Zephaniah chapter 3, and I'm going to read it from the NASB because it brings out something that I want you to understand. The Lord your God is in your midst, a victorious warrior. He will exult over you with joy. He will be silent in his love. He will rejoice over you with, sh with shouts of joy. You get that? He will be silent in his love. You know, after thinking a lot lately about the interactions that I've had with my sons, it came to me that the reason why my dad was silent about the damage on the new car was because he didn't want to say anything that would hurt me in that moment. You know, faith that is built upon the immediate answers of God for our specific situations is weak. Faith like that is only one frightening diagnosis or shattering phone call away from collapse. When we think God is silent or absent, it may be that our faith in him is superficial. God is not silent. Rather, he has already said and done more than we can absorb. Read it. Remember it. See it. Believe it. And live it. Go and doubt no more and believe that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Lord, for all those who heard these stories and this message this morning, I pray that you would help them believe in your love that sometimes is silent but is still powerful in our lives. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you today. Thank you for being with us today. We hope you enjoyed our service. Wednesday night, we have our call to prayer happening in person and online at 7 p.m. If you would like to register for our in-person meeting, you can do so by using the link in the description box below. We also have our Facebook Live worship session happening on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. If you would like prayer or support, you can text us by texting the number on your screen right now. And lastly, we have our post-service live happening in just a few moments with Pastor Paul. So if you have any questions about what you've heard today, then he is there waiting to answer them as best as he can. The link is in the description box below. That is it for today. I hope you have an awesome week ahead. Bye.